Hey everyone, we are here to talk about the ETs encompassing the planet and why are they here. And this is a really awesome topic. I can't wait to, you know, delve into it. But uh, what is, uh, where can people find you? I know your website's on the screen, but where can people find you, Kristen? Um, they can come to my website there on the screen. Um, and again, uh, my name is Kristen Davies. Uh, you can also check me out on my YouTube channel, Kristen Davies. And I love to come live in my group, Intuitive Angel Messages, once a week and channel different energies and uh, channel guidance for people uh, through my Facebook group, Intuitive Angel Messages. Yeah, once a week. I love it. Yes, and um, she also has a lot of courses coming up, which are, which are really awesome, which I really, mm -hmm. really recommend and really like. And yeah. uh, the my, uh, you can find my YouTube channel. It's going to be in the description. Both of our channels are going to be in the description on either of our um, the videos. And my YouTube channel is called uh, Paul Milgis, and I just talk about spiritual topics and the ascension process and uh, a lot of ETs and all kinds of things. But yeah, the first question mm -hmm. I would like to, like to ask the ETs yeah. or ask oh, yeah. about the ETs mm -hmm. is what kinds of ETs are like encompassing the earth? What are like, what, what are some of the kinds or some of the main kinds at least? You know, what's really interesting is um, the number one thing I see posted online is when are we going to see the ETs? When are the aliens coming? When are the, you know, when are they coming? When are we going to talk with them? When are they going to be here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think what a lot of people um, don't realize is that they are here and they've been here for a very long time. Um, they may not present themselves in physical form, but energy or energy energy is omnipresent right so um you know the starseed families that you have incarnated with uh in other life forms are here assisting you uh throughout this lifetime in energy form uh so for example i have three pleiadians here helping me on a daily basis uh here in my home one is helping me with ascension ascension symptoms one is helping me with my diet um, and the third one is overseeing everything that's going on and just assisting the other two and uh, just answering any questions that i may have what are the types of ets that are encompassing the planet um, so before i channel that answer um, i can relay that i do see uh, and communicate with different ones that come through readings that I offer. And uh, even some of them will come through and channel uh, and uh, relay guidance through some of the mediumship courses that I offer. And they're here to help us. They're here to guide us and assist us. Thank goodness. Um, it's not just the angels. It's not just the archangels or the ascended masters here. We have you know these beings that um we could liken this to like family members that we've had in other vessels that are here energetically assisting us our starseed family and so the the ets that are here on the planet um oh it's wide wide ranging uh i guarantee i know i don't know all of them but the ones that i am aware of are the Pleiadians, uh, uh, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, Syrians, um, Lyrans, Greys, um, and you know, not all Greys are negative in nature. We do have some that are assisting us, helping us, and uh, so we have a wide range. It even goes wider than that. I often say about twice a month we'll have an et energy that will step forward during a reading and i've never seen it before um and i have no idea what it is uh, but i can describe what it looks like and i can give a description as to uh, where it came from and what it's helping the person with it's a starseed family member uh, if you want to say that friend, family member, or 
certain planets they work together primarily so it's more of a working type uh relationship it's really fascinating so one kind um, of thing i was going to ask about that is so mm -hmm. when we have a starseed family member on our team or something do we like um do we communicate with them like are they on their incarnate on their planet or do they come uh, to us energetically or are they in physical form here <laughs> so of... so we we know that we are a fractal of our higher self our super conscious state right our soul it's just a small percentage of your soul housed within this vessel uh learning and growing through this vessel so you can look at it like a fractal of that energy comes forth to assist you from that lifetime here assisting you in this lifetime especially with us anchoring in a lot more light and having these waves of high vibrational frequency anchoring on the planet right now and you know when we are on the path of ascension and ascending and uh, shifting our vibrational frequencies, we have these ET energies primarily really stepping forward uh, on Earth, assisting us. So, uh, you know, are they in physical form or uh, and also coming here and helping us in energy form? You know, uh, all of the above <laughs> is what I like to say. Uh, so I'm going to channel the guidance on that and see who steps forward. Okay, so it is uh, the Pleiadian who is here assisting me in my home. Okay, as this fractal energy, as this Pleiadian, which is masculine, and this energy is also my spirit guide. Okay, so my spirit guide, Adrian, has incarnated many times in Pleiadian form. And this Pleiadian form is also assisting me here with this path of ascension in this lifetime. Okay, wrap your head around that one. So, so this Pleiadian is stepping forward with the guidance uh, for the answers to these questions. Um, okay. Do you want to slow that down a little bit? <laughs> Human brain here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So we're going to go with the first question, which is, uh, who is here surrounding the planet? Okay. So what is what he's showing me is the planet, and I'm in outer space, and I'm looking around the planet, and I see bright white light encompassing the planet and this bright light is coming from different energy sources or you can say energy bodies and this is coming from like so many different directions uh so approximately how many different et energies are here encompassing the planet he's doing this He's, and he's kind of laughing. <laughs> he says um, thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Not in the millions, but thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Okay. And they're here to support us and to help us and encourage us um to just bring their energy to help uh lift the vibrational freight frequency here uh to help stabilize the frequency here and create more balance uh because he says that there if there's imbalance or chaos unfolding on the planet these energies are stepping forward to assist us to create more balance more stability that's what he's saying. Um, <clears throat> okay, so also, I would like to ask, what is mm -hmm. what is what is is the reason why there's so many different kinds here? Is it because a lot of different kinds of ETs have incarnated here? Is that one of the reasons? Okay, and, then, and are incarnating here? Yes, uh, that, because that? a lot of people ask me, um, you know, 
uh, how, you know, they want to know if they've incarnated in a, other vessels. And I have not seen a person that has come to me for a reading that has only incarnated as a human being. Uh, Earth is a new planet and it's a little bit of a heavier frequency at three dimensional, right? And now we're moving and ascending into four and fifth and that's going to take lifetimes to come um, to practice that. But as far as, <clears throat> um, you know, where we are, we need this support. We need this guidance. We need this help from them to move forward. That's why they're all here assisting us. Um, the one answer that he wants to give is the second question that you asked, which is, are they in physical form and um, bringing their energy here? Or are they only in energy form? or energy bodies. So I'm just gonna ask, answer that question with him. Um, he's saying both, all of the above. So they can be in physical form and uh, project their energy to where they want it to be. They're very much aware of what is unfolding around and or surrounding their space or their environment. So they come to assist. Um, some are truly in energy form, he says, and in an energy body and are here assisting. Some are here uh, helping us with majority of their energy and some are using part of their energy to come here and assist us. And part of their energy is elsewhere, working elsewhere. That's predominantly the case. OK, so that's interesting. I didn't know that. So. You know, energy is omnipresent. Um, it's it can be here, here, here. My angels can be in many different locations at once. So it's not surprising me that these high vibrational ETs can be in multiple different yes. areas at once. So would it be possible for someone, an ET like you or me, to incarnate into this human form, but also be here w within their higher self or their energetic form? Uh, or from like also be incarnated in a separate place a separate yes area. he's just saying yes absolutely yes um abs all of us so <laughs> he's saying all of us we kind of fragment our, or we, we kind of come in with the portion of our energy most of the time we don't put all of it in at the same at, the, at one point in time usually i once asked my angel that question i said uh why isn't the entirety of my soul housed in this vessel and my soul uh or sorry my angel said that my higher self my soul if that were to happen my vessel wouldn't be able to survive so it is a, a, a percentage, a smaller f fractal amount of your higher self's uh, energy housed in this vessel. And we choose the amount before we come into this incarnation. So some of us will choose a smaller amount. Some of us will choose uh, more, more of our soul to be encompassed in this vessel. And the most interesting thing that I've learned in the past five years is that some individuals uh, have assistance, say from Jesus, for example, that energy of Jesus or um, whomever they're closely connected with. And maybe they need a little bit more support depending on the lifetime that they've chosen or maybe the environment that they're in or the location that they live in. And so the energy of an ascended master, for example, like Jesus, will choose a small percentage of his energy and that will come along in that vessel along with that soul's energy in that vessel to assist in that lifetime that was like whoa but awesome. i've only seen that about four times i haven't it's not something i see like all the time this is something that is rare and this happen with like different other ascended masters as well and they kind of infuse some of their energy to help a certain soul in their incarnation Primarily, I've seen uh, a small percentage of Jesus' energy, um, and I believe I've seen it with one other. I think it was Mother Mary, uh, but it's not something I see often. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. One one thing I was is is another question is 
what are they what is the main reason like why why are they helping us like what are they helping us with like what is the main thing that they're helping us with here on awesome um so knowing that personally i've never seen a person that has only incarnated as a human being usually you start out in another vessel or two or three or four and then you come to earth and you house your energy here so you've learned a lot in other vessels and then you come to earth and uh some of us are in vessels that are you know in pleiadian vessels more heart centered uh then we have octarian vessels that are more in the head more okay and all of these lifetimes influence and impact us in this lifetime it's all combined it's all happening at once too there's no linear time there's all of these lifetimes happening at once so what are these ets assisting us with we call them ets i i chuckle that because we are i guess all ets then what are we to them then you know uh it's funny um <clears throat> i'll tell you what we are to them we are loved and cherished dearly <laughs> big time uh the amount of love that they have for us and they are bringing their you know their intelligence their knowledge their broad perspective of seeing and everything from their vantage point in assisting us through this lifetime is awesome okay so what are they assisting us with <laughs> ascension ascension symptoms diet lifting and raising of vibrational frequency um helping us to stay positive and grounded grounded out in nature earthing connecting with trees the earth herself uh nature so flowers the smell of nature being out in nature being near bodies of water primarily the main reason is to help us lift and raise our vibrational frequency during this time of ascension on earth and they're assisting us in uh progressing as far as we can in this lifetime for the time that we have time that we have in these vessels okay uh so some of us will get so far we're only ready to ascend so far some of us aren't interested in any of this uh and some of us are uh readily available to make steadfast progress in this lifetime in this vessel so, so one of the things is that I, I was going to ask is some people always ask uh why don't the ets get really just like change the political system or change the educational system or this or that but yeah. I, I think one of the main reasons they're here are that, that that like you just said they need to change help raise our vibration first and then the, everything else will change as well everything changes from there you know you can point the finger outside yourself but ultimately it's within where we need to go and when that shifts and changes here you probably won't even feel the need to point the finger at anybody because you are the manifester of your reality so you are aware of you become aware and then awake and then on the path of ascension and you become in a state of you're going to allow others to be as they choose and you're going to focus here and where you're guided and what action steps you you are going to take okay let's see where they'd like to take us on that okay so he's showing uh an image of somebody pushing a large boulder uphill <laughs> okay and pushing the boulder uphill it's really heavy he says <laughs> my pleiadian guide says the boulder is really heavy it takes time for change especially here on earth however things are progressing nicely and many changes are to come he says many changes have already taken place if you choose to notice them um he's talking about the evolution and progression of the human race on earth and he's pointing like this so this tells me he wants to talk about what's coming in the future okay 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 so in that case does he um does he think humans will join the like 
ETs as in like um, in terms of when we get uh, more advanced in terms mm-hmm. like will we be able to like talk to them directly and like be uh, like uh, communicate with them better and be on their like uh, councils or, or of some sort is that uh, a, a, in the he says for those souls that are still learning and growing here on earth uh, that is the goal that's their goal too is to have union or coming together assistance he's talking about the fear on earth if ets were to step forward okay so vibrationally we need to be ready uh for them to step forward in this way on earth is coming he says is coming but the vibrational frequency uh within each of us um you know also needs to be ready there are going to be those of us who are open and willing and uh he's talking about stable and grounded um and you know um he's also talking about um you know having a rational mind that the ets will uh step forward and communicate with we, any one of us can do this now it's just a, a matter of learning how to do it most of us are so busy up in our heads with thought and busy in our lives that we don't slow down or take the time to have any stillness up here so how are we going to pick up on communication from spirit if there's nothing no room no quiet time and we have all this undertow of fear and worry so there's going to be a a lot of um shifting and vibrational frequency coming up within each of us okay he wants to talk again about what's coming in the future so i'm just going to follow his lead he's showing earth being a green beautiful paradise you could liken it to how hawaii looks now and the entire planet is uh immersed in nature and it, i just see a lot of green plants flowers water going back to our roots as to how the planet has been in the past but more magnificent than that he says that is what is to come in our future all of these ets have joined together to come here to assist us in order to ensure this future takes place and that we thrive as a race for those souls who choose to incarnate here. he's also talking about on earth in the future uh souls can incarnate into physical form and non-physical and we can enjoy each other's company and come here and he's calling it a paradise in, and you can be here in physical form or non-physical should you wish and each of us um he's talking about uh telepathically communicating with one another so rather than speaking we'll just be able to telepathically communicate but again our vibrational frequencies must be ready for that uh coming moving forward it's really about he says coming out of the darkness and into the light and then showing others the way and if and then he's talking about some aren't even interested in that way some are interested in focusing on the heavy entrenched lower vibrational ways um and being in the world rather than seeing the higher vibrational aspects of their reality and what they're grateful and appreciative of some choose to gossip and dramatize and that's exciting for them rather than turning inwards and creating stillness within meditating grounding many he says many are going to move in this direction though moving forward on the planet many will be he says it's going to be like a, a, a quite a divide of those who are 
at peace and at one. And those who are lower vibrational and, in, and entrenched. And that divide is going to become more and more so gradually over time as we move forward. And those who are not ready for ascension, they are going to choose here to stay here as we encompass and envelop this light, this energy, uh, helping us ascend. And it's going to be bumpier for them. It's going to be really bumpy. And uh, some of those individuals are going to choose to exit the planet. Uh, we could call this like a mass exiting of many souls that are ready to go and be released from their vessel into the light. And he's, he's, he's just showing me into the light and it's very, very high vibrational. So don't, he, I think he's showing me that so that we know that when they exit their body, it's going to be a very high vibrational experience for them. It's immense. He said, there are no words that will describe that. Not, no words, no description can describe that, he says. That's so cool. Very cool. Does, does he think that uh, this time on Earth, is this like the, do we have like the most diversity of ETs, like of like most of the planets in this galaxy? Or great, <laughs> great question. Or some of the most? He says you could see it this way. Yes. Yes. Um, he says it's up there. <laughs> it's neat. He says it's needed. Mm -hmm. He says it's needed. Um, yeah. You know, when I'm having readings with people, I see ETs that are, I just don't, you know, you have to be open to this and you have to be open to seeing things that may be so far out of your uh, comfort zone and you got to be nice and relaxed and see this. And so a, a lot of times the angels won't let me see. So when I see new ET energies that I've never seen before, some of them I'm not allowed to see. Or um, the ET energy will come in, uh, or I should say starseed family member, uh, will come in over, or, uh, ever so close. So they won't come up close to me, and I'm like, whoa. So I have to get that visual <laughs> processed, and then, uh, and then I can ask to, for it to come in closer. Then it will come in closer. But there's nothing that I've seen uh, not around me that is um, upsetting or startling. If there's an ET energy that is running amok with a person, like a reptilian, for example, um, they try to talk their way out, you know, talk a, a good show as to why they're there around the person. But the angels is who I listen to. And the angels will pull me back to pay attention to what they're saying and say, these two are, you know, they're misbehaving around this person and don't believe what they're saying. And then I ask the person, do you want these energies to be removed? And the person will say yes. And then Archangel Michael will step in and remove them immediately. And it's so, amazing, amazing the changes that happen with the person after that, they tell me. So if there's anything that, you feel needs to be removed, call in Archangel Michael to remove it. So but do they work then, in tandem, tandem with the angels? Is one thing I was going to ask. That. Do they oh, work absolutely they do. Um, one thing I want to say there is you can ask for these energies to be removed, but then it's your responsibility to lift and raise your vibrational frequency. Because if you're tanked low, you got to find a way to shift it, even slightly gradually over time, bit by bit. You know, um, you know, getting around higher vibrational people and environments and removing things from your life that, you know, are tanking your frequency. So what I'm saying is that like attracts like raise your frequency and this low vibrational frequency just won't be around because it won't be attracting. So you don't you don't need to be worried or concerned. Call in your team, call in Archangel Michael to take care of it, and then lift your frequency. So are they working in tandem? Oh, yes. Uh -oh. Also, 
of course, they're probably working in tandem with each other to different types of ETs. But what kind of I was going to ask Adrian, what kind of ETs does he like to work with or Palladians in general? Like, what do they like to work with the most? Like, what types of races do they like to work with? <laughs> so this fractal of Adrian, my spirit guide, which is now a Pleiadian here, um, uh, he is saying that he predominantly enjoys working with Pleiadians because it's a vibrational match. Um, some ETs will work with others intermittently or uh, you know, here and there, but yeah. they predominantly work with their own kind uh, for it is a vibrational match energetically. He says the ones that work with others, um, they tend to want to be more of a vibrational match. So if you have, say, for example, a Pleiadian in the 12th dimension is probably not going to be working with, you know, another ET in more of the fourth dimensional frequency, maybe intermittently, but not on an ongoing basis. Is that what you're saying then? Yes. So some of the like 12th dimensional Pleiadians and maybe some of these 12th dimensional blue avians will kind of sometimes work together because they are in similar vibration. Um, uh, we are aware of each other. Uh, you know, when you do passing in the night, he's saying passing in the night, <laughs> like they're aware of each other coming and going into a space. And at times we work with each other. Yes. Um, he's, he's talking about when you have, um, several people that spend a lot of time with each other and this person has their blue avian family members here and this person has their pleiadian members here and maybe this person was predominantly octarian and they have their starseed family here and so then they're all encompassed in the same space working with each individual on an ongoing basis so yes so one thing i would like to ask adrian is the uh the mass exit on this planet, when does you see that happening more so like around a time frame, like 300 years or so? Or It's already happening now and it's going to be a gradual uh, process that is going to be unfolding for years to come. So is this something that's going to happen predominantly right now or the next 50 years and then it will subside or is it going to pick up and increase at some point? gradually over years to come over the next hundred years he's going a hundred years to 200 years but it's petering off coming in after a hundred years like it's starting to slow down so over the next hundred years is the predominant is it time probably one, one of the more beautiful ways to exit you think one of the easier ways <laughs> chuckling and he says you could see it that way yes <laughs> Um, it's a decision, a choice that is made for some souls. It's made before they even enter a lifetime. They know when they're exiting. It's their exit point. And for other souls, it's becoming too challenging to stay in this frequency that is shifting and changing on this ascension path. And their vibrational frequency is not shifting, so they may choose to exit early. And all any which way that they choose to exit is is all right. Um, some may choose to exit with health issues. Um, he's talking about this virus that is unfolding on the planet right now. That's what I was going to ask. Some may choose to exit of their own hand, of their own doing. And um, he's doing this hand signal. All is, all is okay. Okay. So with, with this, these current events right now, a lot of light workers are finding a lot of peace within themselves and uh, raising vibration. But is there going to be more events like this or more like kind of a rocky road uh, like in the years to come? <laughs> So possibly like more epidemics or more things that are going to create rocky experiences for people on Earth. A little globally. bit chaotic for some people. Yeah, yeah, creating possibly more chaos globally. Uh, he's just saying very loudly in threes, yes, yes, yes.
he's saying that it's difficult for us to see it from this vantage point, from a broader perspective. But this is what is best for the collective at this time. Some are ready to exit early. Some are meant have already predetermined this exit point long before entering this vessel. Um, he's talking about some are not ready for the changes, the shifts and changes that are going to be unfolding on the planet coming up energetically. And some are just ready to go. It's just their time. So with it, with this during this time, is is this transmuting like during this lifetime? Are a lot of people transmuting a lot of their past lives, even? And yes, big yes. So when big they, long yes. So when they choose to exit, I guess if say the lower vibrational people, I guess they're kind of transmuting a lot of this within this lifetime, maybe, and then exiting or. As much as says I that uh, one can transmute a lot when encompassed through a vessel. Um, he's showing me an image of a person standing there and they are taking in this high vibrational light frequency that is infusing is, is coming all over the globe. OK, there are ascension symptoms happening that people are experiencing because they are anchoring a lot of light. And this light I see from what he shows me coming in through the top of the head. But I also know it comes through the chest, through the heart chakra and through the stomach. So that may create heart palpitations, anxiety right in the chest and stomach, maybe nausea, nausea, a lot of nausea. And you don't know why. And then through the head can be lightheadedness, dizziness, um, headaches, uh, a lot of head pressure. So um, he's showing this light coming in through the vessel. And so with that coming in, it's forcing the lower vibrational energy up to the surface to be transmuted. Um, and that is from throughout from this lifetime, but also transmuting as much as we can from all lifetimes, yes. as much as we can. And then he's talking about. Um, when we cross over, there is more transmuting that takes place on the other side. So another okay. amount. And we learn and we grow and we repeat. We learn, we grow, we repeat. Okay. So it's some of the people that don't really want to be part of this, this ascension process, will, and then they exit, I guess, in this lifetime, and then they would, would they necessarily may, might go to a different planet or a different planet or so? Um, a different environment, uh, a different location. Yes, he's he's likening this experience to being like a a, a holographic seeming reality, right? Yeah. So we would go to another experience to learn and grow through that has a lower vibrational frequency. Yes, this is so correct. They, they could still go stay on Earth, but they could remain in a different frequency on Earth, like a different kind of timeline or reality, I guess. Or is that? <laughs> uh, he's talking about there being uh, many different layers here on Earth. So you see and you experience where your vibration frequency resides within this vessel. But there are other layers where other vibrational frequencies reside in the same space oh, at what? higher higher vibrational dimensions we would call them yeah mm -hmm. so would it be similar to when like a adrian i guess he might be like fifth dimensional or something on his planet but there's also probably going to be like 12th dimensional people or of palladians on his planet as well something like that he says yes this is correct very cool well, I know for myself personally, when I have, say, uh, 12 dimensional Pleiadians come and talk with me, I can only hang on for about 10 minutes <laughs> because there's, their frequency is so high vibrational that where I am vibrationally, I can only take that frequency for so long. And then I have to ask them kind of step away from me a bit so that I can, because I get uh, lightheaded and... Uh, head pressure and it's because I I'm vibrationally not where they are 
they're just so much more. It's incredible where they are. Are they just the ones incredible. that look most like us in like in terms of appearance? What do you say? Yes. Uh, the Pleiadians seeded the planet, but there were others as well. <laughs> but then he's laughing and he says, for those of you who are, have incarnated in many other different vessels, whether it be Octurian, Pleiadian, uh, he's, he's listing them all off. We could go off. We could list <laughs> yeah. them all off. Okay. Uh, and then you come here. That is seeding. So the planet has been seeded, if you want to look at it that way, from many different vibrational frequencies, from many different uh, seeming realities. Because he does says he, it's seeming because it's <laughs> temporary. <laughs> does he see this planet as a lot? Does it have a lot of potential in terms of like, yes. where it can go? Yes. He's just getting a huge yes on my back. More than we realize or could consider. Um, he's talking about in the past that we were on track to move in a certain direction towards a paradise environment here. Uh, but then with it being a free will zone, uh, some others have <laughs> took over and altered that course. And now we are redirecting that course back towards where we originally wished to, wished it to go. Okay. So, okay. He wants me to talk about something that I've said before really quickly, which is, we're not going to see this many ETs and angels, spirit guides, archangels, ascended masters, all showing up and coming here for us. And they're not all going to come here and let the planet go into the trenches. Okay. This is not going to happen. We may have our ups and downs, but it, that's what leads us to get to the light. Right. So it forces us to go within. It forces us to slow down. It forces us to sleep. It forces us to rest. It forces us to go within. That's what's happening right now on the planet. So see the light, see the good in it. There is a reason and a purpose. There's always a reason and a purpose why things are unfolding. And I've always said this, all of them are not showing up to just let the planet go and tank. They're not going to allow that to happen. It's not going to happen. So I've always said that. And he, he just wants me to bring that forward. Do you want to say anything on that? He concurs it with what I've stated. Yes. And uh, also, so so what does he say to all the people that are just kind of fearful about the conspiracies, about the current events and all that stuff? Does he just want us to more focus on who we are within instead of uh, the, all this yeah. other stuff? Yeah, he has something he wants to say, all right. Um, so my Pleiadian uh, uh, guide here, who is a fractal of my spirit guide, um, he would, he would, he says it's okay that we call him Adrian because that's his soul's name. Um, he has something to say in regards to those who are focusing on the lower vibrational aspects. Okay. Stop letting that play over and over in your minds. Why do you do this to yourselves? Why do you torment yourself in that way? Give thought and arise to what you wish to create. You are the manifestors of your realities. You are the way showers here on earth. You are showing others the way by which you speak, the words in which you voice, the emotions, and the thoughts in which you house in your mind. You are an example to those who follow you, watch you, read your posts. So please give thought to what you wish to project and or put out there as you will manifest this outcome. Stop reacting to what is. Go within and give thought to and only thought to what you wish to create, dear ones. And if you have a difficult time in doing this, then please call forth your starseed families, your starseed uh, beings that are here with you your angels, anyone you feel in alignment with, such as Jesus, Mother Mary, Mary Mary, 
Lakshmi. He's just listening a whole ton of them. <laughs> like ascended masters. He's, he is, goes on. Huh, here we go. Uh, um, and so, okay, so there's so many. Okay, he's still going. Uh, we're going to shorten that. And <laughs> and call them in to help you shift your thoughts and your frequency if you can't do it. So if your mind is entrenched on the lower vibrational aspects of your reality, then call them forth to help you. You can do this. Dear ones, you are here to help lift and raise the vibrational frequency here on earth. Anything less than this is dimming your light, your frequency, and those who are watching you in your proximity in, you, in your life. Thank you. Thank you, dear ones. So they, they, they see it, the light in us, and they want us to see that within ourselves. But uh, that's a wonderful message. But uh, I think what I was going to kind of ask next is just um, either Adrian can kind of answer this or is – so when they were seeding the planet, did they seed the planet with, like, animals and, like, different types of it, uh, plants Great. and things like that? Yes. All of the above. Everything. There were master, he's calling them master makers, master developers. Architects. Those who, yes, yeah, who created much of what we see here on earth. But this is an infusion of many different energies that step forward in order to create this paradise. And, and a paradise it will be again. And a paradise it will be again. I felt a lot of energy there. Is that... <laughs> Woo! -hoo -hoo. He's but, just... uh, Whoa. With, mm -hmm. with uh, birds or bird uh, beings, did, were they the ones that kind of brought the uh, all the different kinds of birds here at, and stuff like that? He's talking about DNA genetics they had a hand or a role that was played in this although he says the uh, birds that reside on earth are he's calling it vastly different than these bird beings <laughs> that uh, reside elsewhere Although many are here assisting us as star seed families. Yes. Were, were some of these birds brought here in order to raise the frequency of like the air or the earth and some sort or? Everything is energy and we are able to see from our perspective where if you want to see, uh, he's showing me um, and he's saying where more cleanup is needed. Okay, so there's parts of the planet that are needing more of a cleanup than other parts. And then there's some parts of the earth that are being used through portals, he's saying, in order to transmute the heavy frequency. So it's like they're suctioning it up and transmuting it through another portal in order to transmute that density on a large scale. Mm -hmm. um, sorry if I get off topic, but he's just telling me, and I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, cool. That's super cool. Um, now, with this being said, it's interesting that he's saying that because there's this area uh, where I live and I've been told by my team I am not to pass this certain beach, which is way on the outskirts of island. So I'm not allowed to go past that. And I know there's another beach, and I know it's a beautiful location with lots of trees, like lots of trees. Not many people live in this location. And my, my team was like, you are not to go there. And I'm like, why can't I go there? And then they, they didn't even want to tell me. I was like, okay. Um, 
And uh, so finally, after asking them a few times, they relayed to me that it's a there's a portal there that is pulling in the heavy frequency here on planet Earth to transmit it, and they didn't want me around it. That's and so I was cool. Like, okay. And my my angel was not backing down. So if you don't listen to your team, you'll get a gut feeling of something, a tightness in your chest and your stomach. But if you don't listen, do you notice how it gets worse? Ooh, like, listen to us. And so I was like, no, I'm going to the beach. I'm driving the car to the beach. And we were going, you know, a, a fair distance up there. And my angel was like, nope, you're not you going there. One thing, this is just kind of off the topic of that. That's really cool, though, that there's those portals that transmute all that energy. That's incredible. But uh, I was the, the, there's these, I just had a thought, like, our, the structure of our brains, are, is it different, like, say, a Palladian uh, person that incarnates in the human form? Well, there is a structure of their brain differently than, like, someone that's maybe Arcturian. Or okay, Palladian. yes. Yes. Um, okay. Genetics? So, is it, like, is genetics? it genetics or is it energy? That's really the question. Is or it both. physical <laughs> or both? <laughs> the answer is yes. He's talking about uh, someone that has incarnated as an Octurian, for example, is going to is used to telepathically communicating without using their mouth or their vocal box. They telepathically and they teleport items and they can do things that now they are restricted and cannot do in this physical form here on earth <laughs> um and then he uses the pleiadian as an example which is telepathic but also talking and very heart-centered very joy-filled very light-filled um a different frequency than the Octurian. Both high vibrational, but different frequency, different energy. And this uh, this alters an individual energetically based on where they've been. And he says, and genetically. How is that the case? <laughs> He's like, he's like, do you, do you want me to get into science? Do you want me to get into the nitty gritty details? <laughs> no, we don't. Right down to a cellular level. Okay, okay. He says, okay, so um, all of your cells, everything in your body mm -hmm. is operating with energy running through it. Yeah. He's going to try and simplify it, this for us. He says. <laughs> so the vibrational frequency that you housed. And we're at that frequency. Some of you, he says, made it up to fourth dimensional frequency, fifth dimensional frequency, and then you drop back down to assist here on Earth in helping to raise the vibrational frequency here. It's been very difficult for many of us to come here. But this vibrational frequency that we carried uh, through these other vessels directly influences our 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 physical bodies, our genetic makeup, our DNA. Some of us are more advanced than others. Some of us are similar or like the the vessel that we're in, say for example, similar, more similar to a Pleiadian, whereas some some energies have incarnated in vessels that are so vastly different than the human vessel. It's quite difficult. It's quite discombobulating for them to be here on Earth and in this vessel. So, for example, like a person that is incarnated as a blue avian of some sorts, and then they incarnate in the human form. What are some of the difficulties that they might face when they come into the? Into the... <laughs> <laughs> Just before we get there, he's talking about some of us are used to incarnating into a vessel that is a certain thing we consistently have. A sex and now we're incarnating in as a different sex and this is where he talks about transgender um and the fluidity of gender and um so he wants to speak on this just briefly here be who you want to be 
you know deep down who you are and you don't need uh, those in society, whether they be your friends or family members or even doctors to tell you who you are. Be who you wish to be. <laughs> Go within. Be, and he's talking about being solid in knowing who you are. It's all fluid in the end, he says. It's all fluid in the end. It's all energy. It's all energy. You're here, you're there. You're enjoying different uh, bodies, different frequencies, different vessels, different sexes. Okay. And so now, uh, say somebody incarnates as a Bolivian and how would... Uh, he's, he's laughing. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so you want to put that into words? He's talking about being in a physical <laughs> vessel, but you want to take flight. You're taking flight all the time. You're, you're flying. <laughs> Energetically, you're out. Um, sometimes he says it's difficult for souls to want to house in a vessel that is vastly different than where they once were. So they are not grounded. And they're out of their vessel. And they're used to being up and flying and free and in the moment. Why in the world would someone do that? Why would they incarnate into a human body after, <laughs> after they in, incarnate into something like that? He says, you know the answer to this. <laughs> but he will go there. Sometimes you get knocked down a peg or two in order to redirect for more growth, to learn new things that are greatly valuable, to help others and within their growth. Um, and you always know that you will move back up in vibrational uh, frequency again, once again. Um, he's talking about, say, for example, we keep incarnating in the same vessels. Get more say used blue, to it. Okay, so we'll say blue avian. And so we enjoy that journey and that process, but then we kind of reach a pinnacle of growth. Like we can't really advance past that point. So we come to a place, <laughs> he says, so we come to a place like Earth where it is eclectic and different and there's um emotion a broad range of emotion and frequency there's a broad range of frequency energy here some of the frequency and energy here is high high vibrational and some is very low low vibrational and it's um kind of uh all over the place because there's still uh unconsciousness here it's like we're still kind of learning to walk, essentially. Okay. And this environment creates a lot more growth and depth. Um, say, for example, um, as a Bolivian, you advance and you grow. Uh, but sometimes it's best to come to a place and get in the middle of it and ha have it be messy and uh it, it can be messy at times but it can also provide a lot of opportunity for growth awesome and so how, mm -hmm. how i was just going to ask i know palladians they experience emotions similar to the way humans do and or we're moving in that way in that direction but how would a blue avian, or like, for example, that I've been a blue avian, how would they experience emotion? Is it is it different? Like, I, it would be hard hard to experience. <laughs> he's showing a bumpy, bumpy. Um, he's showing bumpy. You learn and grow over time, and he says, and. You flourish when you surround yourself with higher vibrational people and their personalities, their way of being in the world. And then you flourish. You remember, you thrive in that environment and you go forth in that environment. If you um, are around ungrounded people that are discombobulated or disconnected, unawake, 
it can be a bumpy journey. So when you know better, as Kristen says, you do better. Oh, so w with like blue avians, for example, it's more important for their environment to be on point a lot of times. Way yes. But on with the with the Palladians, they're probably more grounded in general. So it's sometimes they can flourish in maybe not the best environment. So the Pleiadians and the humans have more of a like or a simil similarity. So it's easier to be grounded in the vessel. It's easier to incarnate here. Although he says that most souls know that coming to Earth may be a challenge. It will be a bit easier for a Pleiadian versus, say, a Blue Avian. Yes. To thrive here when incarnating as a Blue Avian it is important to ground yourself daily, to go within meditation, eating foods that help ground you, and surround yourself around those who are and ask why he's wording it like this. Uh, surround yourself with those who are worthy of you. Building that wor self worth and self love. And then you create that environment for yourself. So surround yourself with those who are worthy of you. He, he knows by which I speak of. <laughs> the, okay so does adrian did he ever think about incarnating here on earth and what was going through his mind when he was thinking about it if he was thinking about it? he says i have incarnated here on earth um he says he's not incarnated right now for he is assisting me as my spirit guide um and he says it can be a bumpy ride here on Earth, but an enjoyable ride. You know the, uh, um, you know that saying when you're talking about a box of chocolates. The mm -hmm. exciting thing is you just know which one you're gonna get. Yeah. It is like the wild wild west here. Coming in and knowing that your thoughts, your emotions, what you place your attention and focus on, you create, is the most important thing to, to realize. You are the manifester of your reality. He, he, he's doing some manifesting right now with affirmations. So he's just like, <laughs> everyone is abundant. We all have wonderful loved ones in our lives um we are healthy and whole and vibrant so he's saying these things and, and affirming that for everyone here mm -hmm. will will the manifesting of our like abundance are the way that that we manifest in this reality or the way that we mirror and stuff what this speed up and get more intense yes and, be more important to like where we place our thoughts yes yes mm -hmm. um, it's already happening uh, so you uh, may notice an energetic kickback uh, if you have a low vibrational thought or you're focusing on something that's low vibrational like a television program or a movie and um, it's immediate as things speed up and pick up it's going to be more immediate uh, he says you will manifest higher vibrational thoughts much rapidly, more rapidly and faster than low vibrational ones. But it's really important as to where you place your attention, because if you hang in there and you continuously focus on the lower vibrational aspects of your seeming reality, then you are going to create more disconnect discombobulation more uncertainty more ungroundedness and why would one wish to create that for themselves so i think this is a pretty funny question so what like 
if there's people, um, if you're an ET and you have a, your soul group as an ET and say you decide to incarnate on Earth, what, what is sometimes the reaction of your soul family? Like, what do they think when you decide to do that? Sometimes? He's, he's cracking some jokes. He's like, are you, are you sure you want to do that? Okay. <laughs> We'll help you. <laughs> yeah. Um, cheering you on when you're going to go, but like watching to see how it goes. Uh, applauding you for your courage, courage, courageousness. Uh, he, he's laughing when he says <laughs> all this. If a soul chooses to come to earth, then they are ready for growth. And we salute and applaud that progression. It's all about eternally growing and evolving and helping others. Uh, there is no end. There is no end. You can take breaks. You can learn on the other side. You can grow on the other side. Uh, but it's a completely different environment and experience when you are having a temporary seeming physical experience he says and it's very enjoyable and it's fun and one can thrive in this environment or they can dip down and drop in their frequency and not thrive in this environment so irregardless of what is transpiring around you you can still thrive you can still focus on the light you can still He's, he's likening it to being in the eye of the hurricane. So the hurricane's going on around you and you, you know, you just let them do as they wish until they're ready to ask questions, maybe start moving on a path of awakening or wanting something better for themselves. But you're going to stay nice and peaceful and calm in the eye of the storm. If you wish to even see that there is a storm brewing, he says. You can see, like you can see the lighter, you can see the lighter aspects of this reality. You can choose to focus on the, um, oh, he's talking about that gentleman who has started his YouTube channel that used to be on the office and his John YouTube Krasinski. channel. Yeah. Yeah. John Sorry. What's his name again? John Krasinski. Yes. And he's showing me him starting this YouTube channel. Uh, which is showing all the high vibrational things that are unfolding on the planet right now. And, and then he's just applauding him. More of this is going to be taking place here on earth in the future. And this is where the great divide will unfold because it will be those who wish to focus on the old concept, the old belief systems, the old thought patterns, and those who are bringing in the light with the new belief systems, thought patterns. He says they're not really new belief systems. They've always been here. We just haven't chosen to look at them, uh, focus on them, or believe them. <laughs> he applauds him. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like whenever I and, and I'm ha having such a good time in my reality, even like just just an amazing time, and then I will turn on the news or something, or look at a news article, and then it'll be like this chaotic thing that's going on I was like what <laughs> in my life i'm not experiencing that at all like i'm experiencing all those high vibrational things if you but, if we each individually bring in the light and we focus on the light what's there going to be in the future right? more light <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh yeah it, the, this is just another funny thing i think so when it when ets and their soul group decide to incarnate i guess one of the person one of the people so sometimes the first person goes and that they, they all like look at him and see how does it how is it going to plan out for him so maybe i'll no. after that. <laughs> <laughs> i'll go into the so yeah. so what i see is a soul group on the other side mm -hmm. and i've seen anywhere from 10 to 15 souls in that soul group and they're all learning and growing with each other incarnating with each other or incarnating with other souls from other soul groups um and or even going and incarnating into two different vessels seeming vessels uh at once so that would be your twin flame right 
So if you're with, you know, a soul from your soul group, that would be your soul mate. And that can be sister, brother, mother, child, uh, romantic or otherwise. Um, and so, so when I look, and I see there's two souls that hang back that don't incarnate and they they are acting on behalf as your spirit guides. And that's who they are. You've incarnated with them before, but they're helping you as you incarnate in a human vessel. So do you want to answer that one? He's cracking a joke again. He's like, we're cheering you on. And then we're like, go on, get out of here. And when we kick you out the door and head on down there. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Time for you to go, he says. Okay. He says he no. likes to see me laugh. He likes to see me smile. He wants to see more laughter and smiling going on uh, globally and seeing the brighter, lighter aspects of our realities. That's why he's saying what he's saying and doing what he's doing. Um, what do we think? Well, really, it's between us and um, we may be working with an ascended master or an archangel may um, give give their guidance. But we're working with others as to what is best for our growth. If we have more challenging lifetimes that we are choosing, we we know what's coming um and we he's going to say this in words that we would understand as human beings we take like a deep breath and then we join forces to assist and help you in every possible way that we can it's awesome and we try to lift your spirits and we try to guide you in the moment um in onto paths that are better for you or better suited for you we don't anything that in physical form we don't always listen but that's what awakening is all about and free paying will. attention and listening yeah but, yeah and so in terms of he was just saying he like he wants people to have more laughter and that's exactly what a Palladian would say of course but <laughs> pretty much so would it be a purpose like a purpose so if there was a ET race or beings that weren't maybe, at, at, we're kind of coming up on an hour or on the end the end here, but if some if an ET race, they're not very advanced in emotions, and they, yeah. so would a Palladian like would they maybe incarnate into the experience and be surrounded by more like people that are more familiar with emotions like Palladians or or to help them understand and learn about emotions more. Is that possible? Um, okay, that's a good question. Uh, so, so if you're more used to being in a vessel with more emotional range, you're usually drawn towards other individuals that are the same or like. Mm -hmm. For those who have incarnated within vessels that have not had that emotional range, he's using a gray for an example. It can be dis difficult here incarnating here. This is all new completely new uh, and quite different than what you are used to vibrationally, energetically, uh, you're saying logistically, like the actuality of it. Um, it just takes time and patience. And this is where the growth comes in. It can be bumpy at times, but it will smooth out over your lifetime and or he's also talking about lifetimes to come it's really becoming a, adjusted and used to the vibrational frequency here on earth but also within this vessel um what are you showing me here like say for example someone has incarnated as a gray there's not many that come forth to incarnate into a human vessel because the vibrational frequency is so vastly different um and he's talking about for the advancement and the growth of one's soul incarnating say for example as a gray this is why hybrids are being created because there's more of an emotional range between uh a hybrid versus uh, just a gray it's an easier a great he says a, a great huge difference of range 
is it a is it an easier transition to go from like to a hybrid than to go straight to a human <laughs> is he thing yes yes although both are quite different um grays are not used to any kind of emotion or feeling so it's all very on the surface and new to them when they incarnate into a hybrid or human again there's not many that have incarnated into a human vessel he's saying that how many have i met uh two in my life so one last question and then mm -hmm. we can do his he can, he can say a final final message or you can say something but one last question is so a lot of people come in with these difficulties like adhd or disabilities and things like that are a lot of these people ets and they come in with these challenges or these things to to um overcome or to or the or do they does it sometimes give them an advantage in some Mm -hmm. or, or 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 is it tied to their vibrational frequency in which they've housed within these vessels from many many other experiences too it might just um, be labels yeah <laughs> yeah okay let's see what he says to that um each of these disabilities if that's what we want to call them yeah. uh he's saying we're chosen before coming into this vessel many are experiencing these disabilities in order to learn and grow and not only them but their loved ones who are around them and helping to take care of them or in their lives are also signing up to learn and grow um, and this can be this can be for some quite a bumpy path he says a challenging uh path is this helping to change the educational system as, as well? Yes. Um, there are a lot of changes taking place. So some are coming in with dietary sensitivities uh, and, and needing to have changes. Um, some are aware that uh, they just don't wish to eat the animals on Earth. Some have sensitivities to cleaning products or detergents. Some are just more sensitive to the vibrational frequencies that are around them here on Earth. So they're just more open and sensitive in general. Some are not grounded in their vessel. And so we may label this as ADHD or ADD <laughs> or autism, a disconnect. Uh, he's talking about uh being within the vessel but not able to connect um being he says out of none, body <laughs> yes <laughs> he's saying he's saying um connecting with expression of um, uh expressing yourself in the physical vessel like there's a disconnect in the brain he's talking about nonetheless these are experiences that a soul is choosing and part of the reason is to make changes here on earth that are greatly needed nothing changes things faster than when your child needs things to change <laughs> oh my god yeah not the truth so a lot of these kids are even either teaching us or they're almost tuned into a whole different frequency sometimes where they can't even like focus on this physical reality and, and, and times like that. He's talking about animals being used to help these children and he highly suggests uh, like therapy dogs. Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes cats are good too, he says, but he's really emphasizing therapy dogs or dogs that know what they're doing that have been oh, yeah. trained. Oh, he really cool. feels strongly that these dogs um, or and animals in general, just even being around animals, are yeah. so therapeutic. Or nature. Good. The animals are here to teach us and also to help us. And their vibrational frequency is really good for us as well. Is that one of the reasons why they're brought here or some of these animals? 
vibrationally, the animals are more in balance and blend into the frequency of the planet's frequency more so than ourselves. He says <laughs> <laughs> we are learning from the animals. We're trying to catch up. But they're already kind of there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's what like I love. Blessing. Great blessing. That's amazing. Th therapeutic animals and stuff. And I think a healer said when I was little and I was pretty depressed and stuff, I would just lay by my dog and she could sense that. And she's like, it's really good when he lays by the dog and that helps ground him and get him more into his body. But uh, I think we're kind of coming up on the end here. But does he want to yeah. like do any last messages or do you want to say any last things about your yeah. courses or anything? Yeah. Um, well, one of the courses coming up next is the mediumship for beginners course. That's coming up June 15th until the 30th. Um, and that's two weeks. Uh, there's two mediums on hand. You can participate around your own schedule and your own time zone online. Come live or just watch and uh, progress uh, along with us, practicing with our angel cards and asking questions and learning how spirit is communicating with you. Um, I often will say this, that what I'm teaching in this course is really what my guardian angel has taught me. So it's how are they communicating with me and how do I feel that? It's pretty amazing to see the changes in people. Um, yeah. It's only $155. And, uh, you know, you can have uh, lives come live if you wish or observe and watch along with ebook and pre recorded material to learn and grow. It's just a high vibrational environment to be a part of. And that's what I want. I want to bring everybody together in a high vibrational environment online in a private yeah. group. Uh, and the base course material will be emailed to you afterwards. So you will have that afterwards to use um, when you wish. And um, uh, yeah, the I last one of, few. One, hmm? one yeah. of the greatest things about these courses and about spirituality is that we don't have to be combined with like religion religion or anything mm -hmm. we get to connect with all these different types of beings we get to connect with our like a starseed families or our angelic team and it's like it's like when you ever go into these courses you experience a lot of different types of energies and it really yeah. helps uplift you because they're so high vibrational and as well as the angels but. and i find that that you know spirit knows you're coming into this course and mm -hmm. um your team starts to uh transmute a lot of layers from you when you come in so you may need to have a little lie down from time to time you know rest a little bit more but you're removing blocks and you're shedding layers and you're a part of a great group of high vibrational people and and you get to enjoy and have fun and participate it's just a wonderful environment to be around well you know you've been in four of them now yeah. I yeah, they've been great, haven't they? Yeah, it's They're just every so time, uplifting. Every time it's awesome. It, it, you get to meet all these cool people and it, you get yeah. to practice together. And it's good because it's non judgmental space and it's e like easy to express love yourself. And yourself. Light. To say love and light and then fun. And I like humor and fun. Let's have some fun with each other. A lot so, of people yeah. need that in their life. I'm oh, not, yeah. <laughs> And I love it. I love being like that. Oh, you don't get me started. Um, so the last few words uh, from my Pleiadian guide is this. Um, there are many changes coming up here on Earth. So if you feel pulled in a certain direction, follow your intuition, your internal guidance system, dear, dear ones. So if you feel pulled to relocate, or change careers or <laughs> he's saying take uh, training or uh, lessons or further education in whichever way move in that direction follow your internal guidance system if you feel guided to let go of certain relationships partnerships please pay attention this is all for your highest and best good. Uh, but you also have a hand in, to play in this as this is your own free will choosing as well. 
Thank you, dear ones. It has been an honor to be able to channel through this dear one. A Adrian's fra <laughs> he's, he's chuckling and saying, Adrian's fr fractal Pleiadian. <laughs> he's chuckling and laughing and saying that. <laughs> but you can call me Adrian, he says. <laughs> love it. Gets. Well, thank you. Yeah, right. I, I love it. You know, everybody can come and check out my YouTube channel, Kristen Davies, and and your your YouTube channel, Paul Milgis. And I'll be in the description. And, so yeah, we'll put it in the description below, and you can come check us out. All right, we good to Yay. go. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye, everybody.